Hey guys, welcome back. Um, so I delved into my 172nd stuff, picked up a few soldiers on eBay, and um, I'm putting together on a 172nd scale. I'm throwing together this right here is one entire regiment of 172nd. British troops. This is going to be the 44th. Uh, behind them, from here on down, oops, is going to be another regiment. And the way that they're going to be based is one soldier, one toy soldier, one miniature equals 12 real soldiers. So I've got two regiments right here of 172nd British line. And then up above here, I have two regiments almost fully painted of Belgian troops. Um, so that's all this 170, got, got me feeling a little bit nostalgic. So I, I pulled those guys out. Um, I also I'm still working on these guys and uh, this is my 172nd mess <laughs> oh yeah and we got some uh, Royal Horse Artillery in here these guys here are already painted got some extra horse there this book came in yesterday, and this book came in yesterday, and I picked up this book yesterday. Uh, I got my new War Game mag, and War Games Illustrated, so I got some heavy reading. Uh, some old FX stuff there, some empty parts and stuff there, and then, of course, I, I went through this stuff before, but this is my... Um, the La Saint, but it's not the old one. It's the '80s. It's the '80s set, and it's this big one here. Some SC figs here. And there's going to be two. There's, I believe, two battalions, uh, two regiments of uh, of French. Here. Got some. I think I'm going to make these Swiss. SC Imperial Guard. We got some uh, old Apex French uh, French line troops. We got some British Hussars. More British troops. I got some. I got some more coming from England. And uh, so that's what I'm doing. I'm just I'm just kind of messing around here. But what I wanted to do, guys, was um, go through this. Now I know, um, I'm trying to think, who put this on YouTube? Right now I'm having a brain fart and I can't remember which one of you guys put this book out there. And you put it out there a while ago. And I was going through, um, through the, uh, the old YouTube stuff and uh, you mentioned this. And I'm wondering if it's Liberator, I'm not sure. Uh, but this is an older book, Illustrated Encyclopedia, Uniforms of the Napoleonic Wars, an expert in-depth reference to the officers and soldiers of the Revolution and Napoleonic period from 1792 to 1815. Detailed information on the uniforms of the Austrians, British, French, Prussian, and Russian forces with additional material on minor forces. Contains an unprecedented wealth of pictorial detail with over 600 illustrations of uniforms, historical scenes, battle plans, campaign maps, and provides an unrivaled source of visual information on the fighting men of the period. The author is Digby Smith with the consultant by Jeremy, Bl Jeremy Black, MBA, MBE. So, let's do a quick review on this book. So I perused this thing last night, 
is I have to work 4th of July. Which But this is another great book. Europe in the late 18th century. At this time, Europe was a melting pot of political ideas. The ancient regime of the Bourbon France was the epicenter of radical concepts made manifest by the revolution of 1789. This spark initially a moderate plea for greater power sharing ignited a pan-European power, uh, I'm sorry, pan-European war destined to last for 23 years. The era, therefore, was a time of dynamic change as the ideals of liberty, equality, and fraternity challenged the crown heads of Europe to face the power of the people. The result of this clash of ideologies was the demise of the old political order and symbolized by the decrepit Holy Roman Empire and the emergence of a modern era. British ships dominated the European seas and facilitated her huge national wealth. King Louis the Sixteenth of France, a weak king led by his extravagant Austrian wife Marie Antoinette. So it's got battle maps, little histories here and there. The bustling Gate Market in London with all the signs of a properous trading nation. A portrait of the dashing young Napoleon at the start of his military success in 1796. The reconfiguration of the Holy Roman Empire. French Marshal Jean Baptiste Jules Bernadette became Crown Prince of Sweden in 1810, and Sweden was an important Baltic power in her rival to Denmark and Russia. The balance of naval power. The British ship Formidable breaks the French line in the Battle of the Sands. British, French, and Spanish, the decisive battle of Trafalgar. This map shows when Nelson's double column attacked and pierced the Franco-Spanish line. Nelson stands on the deck of the HMS Victory amid the bustle of his ships at battle stations. Life of a Soldier. The second Hussars, French bivouacking at Austerlitz in 1805. Baron Dominique Jean Larry, Surgeon in Chief of Napoleon's Army, treats officers on the battlefield of Borodino, September 1812. You get some British line there, you get some Prussian Grenadiers from 1815 there. Major campaigns and battles. So it delves into a lot of history, which is pretty awesome. At the Battle of Busaco, 27th of September, 1810, Wellington prepared a trap for Marshal on the sea and his army and won a brilliant victory. Madrid, 1808, a struggle between the French forces and the people of Spain who rose up against Napoleon's conquest. At the Battle of Quatre Bras, June 1815, a square of the 28th Regiment of Foot stands against a French cavalry attack. And at the Battle of Waterloo, at the moment when the Scots Greys captured the Eagle at the 45th Regiment. This 
is France. Revolutionary France from 1789 to 96. Napoleon's rise to power. Napoleon in Egypt. Portrait of Napoleon as the first council. French army uniforms. Pretty neat, guys. Regimental, regimental distinctions as your title, date, raised, facings, buttons, pockets, and cuffs, collars, and cuffs, and flaps. As their number, their title, and the date they were created. This is the Republican infantry. Grenadier is drummer of the 93rd Demig Brigade. Let me see if I can start greasing through this because I think I'm taking up a lot of time. Engineers and miners. armies in Egypt. The Imperial Guard. Oh, they got equipment too. This is this is an awesome book too. Wow. Nice. And this was uh, a, another I learned about this book to uh, one of our fellow hobbyists. And I'm still trying to think of his name. And it's not coming to me. So forgive me. Definitely a cool book. Wow. I think I paid like uh, $25 for this book. I think it was well worth it. I got it off of Amazon. Pure artillery engineers and miners. Foreign auxiliary troops. The battle of French ship Redoubtable is about to surrender to the victory. This justifiably celebrated victory of Admiral Horatio Nelson and the Royal Navy in 1805 ensured Britain's global supremacy for the next 100 years on the sea. British government and the birth of her empire. Frederick Augustus, the Duke of York, in uniform of a colonel of the Coldstream Guards.
Sergeant so Edward of the Scott Grays, in the moment, the taking of the Eagle of the 45th. Artillery, here we go. The horse. The rocket troops. Line. King's German Legion. West Indies and the East Indies. Fine regiments. What an awesome book. It really is cool. The Austrian Empire. Emperor Franz II, when the Holy Roman Empire was abolished, Franz was forced to change his title to Franz I of Austria.